G'day guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm answering the question from one of the viewers. His name is Tim Hepburn. And his question was, can you do what is the best dividend paying stock on the ASX over time in your opinion? The short answer is that I will never give you any stock pitch to buy or sell in this channel. And also, if you've seen my videos, you'll notice that I will never do top 5 LIC or top high dividend paying stocks I would pay right now. Or if I have $1,000, I would buy these stocks. I would never do those kind of videos. I think those kind of videos are patronizing and also damaging your potential investment return. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about why is that so. So I'm, I'm split it into three points. The first, I'm going to talk about the stakeholders of the investment world the people they can bring a lot of noise in your investment journey second i'm going to criticize why the filtering technique based on dividend yield price growth and so-called momentum is not a good strategy lastly i'm going to talk about the challenges that high paying dividend company has conducting business and i'm sorry the answer will disappoint you because you will not get any investment pitch but i believe this is the best way to get high paying dividend stock that is invest in your circle of competence and have a good understanding of where the business is gonna be for the next 10 years with that further ado let's get into it So there are three categories of stakeholders in the investment world. First, the stockbrokers, Perla, Comsec, Sharesys, IG, eToro, you can you name it, CMC Market. Their main focus, the stockbroker main focus is to increase the amount of trade people do. Doesn't matter is it buy or sell. As long as people are doing a lot of transaction, very active management in the investment, they're happy, they're good. That's why. Comsec are really onto it when there's earnings, they publish it so that it will influence you to do something to buy or sell. And most of the times they give recommendations. Oh, here are the top five dividend stock. But then on the little print later on, they'll say, we are not responsible with your damaging uh, investment return in the future. It's always the case over and over. You'll see it in your investment journey. Second, the financial influencer, YouTuber, podcaster, TikTokers, Instagrammers, their main focus is to create profit for themselves. And with the help of social media, they need to create some sort of sensation. They need to create some sort of out of it title like four best ASX dividend stocks to hold forever. Wow. So does that mean you understand the business from now until judgment day? They can make you very rich if you do understand the business. But the sad thing this financial influencer are doing, they are creating courses. They will they promise you unrealistic expectations. They in the end will only create stress in your family or even your relationship just because of bad investment decisions. And these courses are not cheap. There are many signal trading courses or even people who claim to be value investor and still charging people hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Let me assure you guys, us Finance TV will never charge anyone for any type of course. We are giving out and sharing our knowledge for free. We may be right, we may be wrong because we believe a lot of moms and dads investor are losing money through investment costs. That is f bad financial advice, high expensive fund managers charging very high investment management fee. And the last group is the qualified financial advisor. In my opinion, their function is great for people so that they don't make bad decisions that is against the law, but to get a really good return is very rare you'll get it from a financial advisor because if you think of it if they are truly rich and wealthy and really good at managing money they wouldn't be a financial advisor they'll be a hedge fund manager and managing their own money and their net worth will be at least five ten million dollars uh, they don't need to work as a financial advisor if they do work as a financial advisor most likely they'll do it for free you need and you need to look for those kind of people which is very rare so to get the best dividend stock you need to own a business that you understand 
because our circle of competence is limited. You may be understanding more about how the shoe retail business or how people only tend to buy Jordans from platypus or athletes' foods or those kind of things. I don't have that kind of circle of competence. I cannot understand it that well. That's why I would never invest in those kind of company. But if you do understand it for the next 5-10 years, that company could be your best dividend stock. Again, it's not investment advice, but it, I just try to get you thinking about it. Next, the common filter, dividend yield and price growth. I believe this is a self-contradictory statement because all everyone in the financial world understand that past performance doesn't repeat itself. And also business earnings are dynamic. Things change. Things could happen in a matter of seconds. For example, uh, these are high paying dividend stocks. According to Calkine Media, they are FMG, BHP, and Rio Tinto. And straight away, you can think that nobody can predict where the iron ore price is going to be. It could swing and change. One dollar change in the price of iron ore can affect the profit of FMG or BHP in millions of dollars. Just one dollar change. And next, we got retail group, Harvey Norman, JB Hi Fi, retail. Business is very tough. And if it is not your circle of competence, I suggest you stay out of it. And just because the business are still there like Big W, does that mean it's a good business? No, it's not. It's not making any money and it's losing competition against Kmart. But they're still there. The good point is, is that business grow really fast and they also die. Remember the Dick Smith electronics is gone and now a lot of people recommending jb hi-fi is the best dividend stock and if you want further interest look at agl 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 is famous for always paying stable dividends high dividend payout ratio they've been paying dividends since 2011 and is they even increased their dividend in 2017 2020 and yet you will get negative return by just buying agl stock according to the dividend filters as we can see here from 2017 to 2021, the stock price has decreased by 74%, which means all of the dividends you receive is not breaking even with the stock price that is plummeting in value. The other place to look for ideas for dividend stock are the high dividend paying ETF because this ETF is based on an index and most likely those underlying companies in the ETF are filtered based on their dividend paying history. So we have VHY from Vanguard and SYI. I already created a video about this. You can watch it. And essentially you need to look at what companies underneath the ETF. Say Vanguard is more financial heavy and Spider SYI is more a mining companies heavy. And the theme that is always repeated in this channel is that corporate earnings business are dynamic if we look at the share price of bhp it's not a straight line it keeps changing all the time and even in 2016 it has reached of its biggest net loss in the history about negative six billion dollars and at that year in 2016 bhp paid the least dividend for the past 10 years the thing to watch out as well always look for reliable data source in the annual report sometimes even platform like comsec can be inaccurate so in 2016 they have a negative uh, six six billion dollars but in the, the history of statistics it's shown as the earnings to be positive if you look at the statement of income in 2016 it's a negative 6.3 billion dollars and if you look at the chairman message you can sense there's a big thing happen aside from just a really bad commodity price. I'm quoting the chairman here. We are deeply sorry to all those who have been affected by the tragic events at the Samarco iron ore operations in Brazil. So there must be a lot of, there must be some tragic events that includes a lot of lawsuits, compensations, insurance claims. And you can see it from the chairman's face. He He's trying to comfort the shareholders. So in conclusion, I believe the best way to get best dividend stock is to buy business that you understand. You can use filters as starting point. You can use the recommendations by the financial influencers or stock brokers. But you have to remind yourself that past performance doesn't repeat itself. Remember, in this channel, there are two rules. Number one, don't lose money through expensive investment fee and by buying bad and dying business.
Second, think of opportunity cost. Which business will give me the highest return for the amount of time that I have? A reminder as well that company sometimes has no obligation to pay dividends. Bad things could happen like COVID pandemic. They can reduce the amount of dividends just to make sure they have enough cash flow to carry on in, the, in this uncertain period. And what I mean by think of opportunity cost, there are other asset class that will give you a same amount of return with less risk. For, for example, government bonds, high dividend yield ETF, well-managed LIC, all, or even convertible preference shares. And I believe in this financial year 2021, a lot of people buying for preference shares and actually making higher yield compared to people in investing in LIC as shareholders. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.